When was the last time you really had some fun and laughed out loud? It gets harder and harder as we get older. So how do we get back to making our lives fun again? Let's talk about it. So much of our day is taken up with judging not people, but situations. We do it before we even realize it. Is there a way to let go of judgment and truly foster acceptance? Let's talk about it. Are you tired of just getting through the day, especially when you know you were meant for more? I was too. So I started a journey to bring more joy to my life and create a life that I actually loved every single day. Join us as we'll take this journey together, celebrating our failures, being inspired by our successes, and laughing with each other along the way. We want everyone to be able to look at their lives and say, I created a life I love. Hello, everyone. Welcome to I Created a Life I Love. I'm Jeanette, and we have Christine. Hi, everybody. How are you? All right. And today we are going to talk about laughter and fun are not overrated. Woohoo! Yes. Yes. But before we do, why don't we talk about what's up? What's up, Jeanette? Well, um, I recently got COVID. <laughs> and I was really, really sad because during the time I got COVID, I was I had a lot of things planned. My family was supposed to come and visit me. And they did come and visit. However, I um, was unable to entertain them. And I was stuck in my room, you know, trying to recover. So that's what's up with me. Got you. I think for me, I've been um, just handling things with my mom. Those of you following along um, know that I've been um, working with my mom who has dementia and family members to get her to the best place that we can for her and help her and get her the support that she needs. Um, so we've been doing that and it's just, it's just been a lot. We're having to move her again and, you know, everyone gets involved. Everyone has opinions. So I'm really practicing a lot of the things that we've been talking about as far as really, you know, not reacting to people, not reacting to their situations and their attitudes or their moods and things like that. And really trying to say in my own place of joy, uh, it's been good. It's been really good. I think I've done a really good job, but it, is um it is hard so this has been really good practice for me um plenty of times i've hung up the phone and been frustrated or upset and it's really really good work um for me to keep myself in a place of joy and to give myself what i need after those phone calls so instead of just moving on to the next thing in my day i really am taking the time after a phone call if i'm feeling crappy to get myself back to take a moment of one of our you know meditation minutes just sit take a walk quick in nature even for just five minutes and get in my backyard and sit under my tree but just to do something really positive for myself to reset myself before I take that energy and put it on anybody else going forward. Um, so I really give myself time to feel however I'm feeling and then kind of reset. So that's been great. Oh, that's good. You know, sometimes change in, of environment really does help. Um, you know, it gets your mind thinking about other things or, you know, resetting. And so I'm glad you're doing that. All right, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and look at our quote of our day. What is our quote of the day, Christine? Um, we have from Charlie Chaplin, one of my favorite as a film student, a day without laughter is a day wasted. And I love that quote because I do think you can go through a whole day, sometimes maybe even a whole week yeah. without having laughter. And so I think you have to make sure, especially, you know, like I do, I live alone, that if you do, that you've really got to find those ways or watch um, a funny meme or watch a great movie or read a funny book, like whatever you need to do, or just call and have a great phone conversation with a friend. If you're 
um, alone and get yourself laughing. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, if you can interact with people, that's even better in, you know, sharing those moments of laughter. But for me, if, you know, on a busy week when I'm going straight from work to home and home to work, like there's no time to really connect or go out with other people, I still try and find a way in my car ride or when I get in my car, like on the way there or back or at home to find things that make me laugh and bring me that joy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need those moments of laughter. And especially when you're having those hard days, like it's just, you know, it just gets you going, you know, so I'm glad. And our second quote is laughter is the language of the soul from Pablo Nerida. Um, that one is a good one as well. Yeah, I like that. Why is it important to have laughter and fun throughout the day? One of the first things um, that as I was looking and doing research on this topic, I found was at helpguide.org. And it was talking about the physical, mental, and social benefits of laughter. So this isn't just something to do because we're saying like, it's great to laugh and it makes you feel good. That's absolutely, you know, completely true. And it helps you have a whole different perspective on things. But there's also real scientific evidence for how it physically um, helps you and gives you health benefits. So it boosts your immunity, it lowers your stress hormones, it decreases pain, it relaxes your muscles, and it actually prevents heart disease. So that's really cool information. So, you know, laughing isn't just about feeling good. It also is actually really changing you physically. Now, some of the mental health benefits, it adds joy and zest to your life. It eases anxiety. It relieves stress, improves your mood, and it strengthens resilience. Um, and lastly, our social benefits, it strengthens relationships. So that's so true. When you don't really know someone that well, or maybe you're not getting along, or even if you're in the middle of a fight, if you can find a way to laugh, it always like diffuses the situation and then bonds you in some way with that person. Um, some of my best friendships all started with us not knowing each other. And somehow we all ended up somewhere laughing hysterically together. And it just, it, it's the beginning of great friendships. So it attracts us to others. It enhances teamwork, right? Collaboration um, is always best if you're able to, you know, laugh together as you work and um, accept each other. It helps diffuse conflict, as I was saying, and it promotes group bonding. So it's also a great thing to have at work. This isn't just your personal relationships or your personal life. Bringing laughter into your workplace and into your teamwork and into your collaboration so you are doing whatever work you're doing with joy. Oh, yeah. And like we said earlier, taking that time just to, you know, laugh and bond, you know, once in a while I... I specifically call on my way home, you know, a particular person, and I know that person's going to make me laugh. I know we're going to have our inside jokes and we're just going to, you know, just laugh and cry of laughter. And, and it, it's so beneficial to have that, you know, strong bond and relationship to be able to do that. Absolutely. Why do you think it's hard for people to give themselves or to focus or to remember to bring laughter into their daily life? So I think it's hard because the world is just, there's just so much happening in the world. There's just so much going on in social media, the news, the radio, and it's, it tends to lean towards the negative. You know, I, I often see that, you know. Uh, what is the latest headline? So, you know, not saying it's not, not important. It is important to, you know, see all that stuff. However, sometimes we just forget to stop and pause and really, you know, look at things in a different view. I think for me, why it's hard is because 
you have a lot of responsibilities. Like for myself, I have a lot of responsibilities with my girls, with bills, with um, health things going on. Have you know, going through cancer is not easy, and it can definitely be a struggle. And there's real like life concerns there of if you'll ever be strong enough again, if you'll ever feel the same way again, like how you're going to be when you come out the other side. Um, you know, like there's. There's just a lot of heaviness, I think, sometimes in going through life yeah. um, that are serious issues, like the situation going on with my mom as well. It's a very, you know, it, it's not easy and it is serious in, in making sure that she's getting everything that she needs and oh, yeah. everyone has a different opinion on how to give her that. And so how do you find compromise and all of that? So I think it can just the responsibilities of things going on in your life get very heavy. Um, I think that's the first thing. And the second thing I think is because of judgment. And we've talked about judgment a lot, but it is a joy killer. Oh, yeah. And we've discussed that in the fact that judgment um, and saying something is good or saying something is bad automatically sets you up that you don't, you're, you don't stay open to possibilities of what it could actually be. You've already predetermined it's going to be bad. And so I think that, again, we've talked about judgment as something that just happens. Like we, it's just a reaction out of human beings to immediately categorize a situation. Um, mm -hmm. and so I think you have to really work on both of those things. You can still be an extremely responsible adult and have a lot of fun and laugh a lot. And I think we get that confused. I think we feel like, oh, it's not appropriate here to have laughter. It's not mm -hmm. appropriate here to be silly. It's not appropriate here. And that word appropriate is all just a construct, right? It's yeah. all just decisions mm -hmm. by people to say like this, that it's not appropriate. But for yeah. me, it might be completely appropriate. Like I know people who have gone through cancer. And when I told them that I found ways to laugh every day and bring uh -huh. joy to the nurses I was with and be silly and stupid and just having fun, they kind of gave me a look like, oh my God, this is serious. People are dying of cancer. Like it's a very serious yeah. thing. But it's not like I was being irresponsible toward my treatment of cancer, I was being very responsible. Yeah. But the way I got through it is to have that laughter. If it was going to be my last day on this planet or the last week on this planet or whatever is going to be, I was going to go out laughing and being silly and having mm -hmm. fun. And I think that there's a lot of judgment toward people when you are silly or you're, you are having fun that, that it's not appropriate. And for me, that word appropriate is such a judgment. It's such yeah. a shame. Yeah. It's just shame trying to shame somebody else because you're not okay with it. Exactly. So like, uh, I'll give you an example too. My, uh, I just recently went to a funeral and I, um, you know, I was there with family and, where we were reminiscing about things. And sometimes, you know, I, I do realize that everybody goes through death differently, right? That's number Absolutely. one. So, um, and some people have a really hard time going through it. Uh, and what I found to help me out is the laughter and remembering, you know, all those good times and all those good memories. But then I noticed that there are some people that have, you know, specific expectations of others that, you know, you're not supposed to be laughing at this funeral or you're not supposed to be smiling or, you know, um, but that's just me, you know, like I just tend to have a smile on my face and it, I know it's hard. Like I try not to do it at funerals, but it, it just comes out, you know? So, um, it's difficult. It is a difficult, you know, situation when you're going through a funeral, but just be graceful towards everybody, you know, do, during that time and let everybody yeah. mourn in different ways, you know? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that's why I think there's now so many more celebrations of life yeah. because I think as human beings, we've realized, of course, we're going to miss this person. Of course, the loss is unimaginable yes. depending on who it has been taken from our life. Mm -hmm. And you don't get through life without going through loss, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's not until you're older 
or it happens when you're very young. But all of us will lose somebody or many people as we go through our lives. And I think that taking it from being a sad thing, we all know it's sad. Yes. No one, you know, if you've been through loss, it's horrible. It's painful. Mm -hmm. It's 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 really difficult to go through your day to day. Um, and not be able to pick up the phone and call that person anymore or to have them in your life or yeah. whatever. It's horridly hard. But the point that we're trying to say is laughter helps you get through it. Uh -huh. That's the thing about it is that remembering the good things, celebrating their life, mm -hmm. remembering those fun moments you had together, yeah. remembering the joy that they brought to your life and how lucky you were to be in their life and they to be in yours. Oh, like yeah. if, you, and so you're coming from a place of gratitude and joy mm -hmm. that helps bring you through it. And, and so it's not about anything being appropriate. And so that's why I just, I hate that word. It's yeah. about how you best get through it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. as we've said, everyone does it different and that's fine, mm -hmm. but we're here to de uh, to definitely say that like the loss in our lives and going through what we've been through disease or loss getting through it is definitely easier if you're having laughter if you're having joy if you're having gratitude if you're if you're coming from that mindset mm -hmm. it's um it definitely supports you and helps you oh yeah oh yeah and you know um it it is hard not only with death and you know um diseases it's just there's so much negativity out there too sometimes people are negative and that kind of energy goes towards you as well and so just to make sure that you filter that out and that you don't let it affect you as much because it could it definitely could um there are you know i'm not going to say my family's perfect or anything but there are some times when people are negative in my family and I'm just like, I'm to the point though, where I, I and it, it might seem rude a little bit, but I tell them I'm like, Hey man, let's think about it another way. Or let's, let's, you know, change your mood or thought or, and sometimes I'll say like, let's not be so negative. And then they, you know, the, it brings light to them because I could feel it affecting me emotionally and physically and I love them and I don't want to be separated from them you know I want to spend time with them but the quality time that I have especially living far away you know nowadays and I I definitely want them to recognize like oh their thought you know patterns as well but I don't want to be preachy too you know so it, it's everybody's journey yeah, and it is. It gets hard in that, but I think that's the whole point that we've talked about, I think, a lot on our podcast here is that whatever's happening out in the world, whatever situation mm -hmm. you're in, or whatever gets thrown your way. I mean, you could walk out the door tomorrow and be in a car accident, get a flat tire, have someone be rude to you, like get um, someone comes at you in a fight from your family, like all of these things, these things are going to happen in your day, right? Mm -hmm. Creating a life that you love is not about your days all of a sudden being perfect. Yeah. Like that's not what it's about. And you and I are both, you know, have dealt with that. Everyone has as far as negative people. That's one of the things, you know, I was mentioning with my mom and dealing with certain family members and just the tone that they use, mm -hmm. right? The words that they use, the way they talk to you can be extremely negative, right? Mm -hmm. As you're saying. And so- we know that life is happening. All of those things all over is happening. You have to be your own, you know, self-advocate in taking care of your energy yes. and you can't let their energy change yours. Oh, and yeah. so you know, that whole comment of, you know, like, look what you made me do, or you made me angry, or you made me upset, or those types of phrases, you can't use those because no one can yeah. make you angry. Thing. You have to take ownership of your mood, of your energy, of mm -hmm. staying positive or not. Now, that being said, that's the struggle, right? That's the hard part is when someone is negative around you or talking to you meanly or treating you poorly, all of that. How do you not let it affect you? And I think one of the things we've talked about is taking a moment, letting yourself feel those feelings, right? Like we talked about at the beginning. Maybe you need a minute to go outside in nature. Maybe you need to walk away for a second. Maybe mm -hmm. you just need to say to that person, you know, hey, 
you know, let's finish this conversation in about five minutes. I need a couple minutes or, you know, whatever you need to yeah. step away, to reset, think of your intention, what you want for the day. If you want a day of joy, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to get joyful with this person being negative, no matter what, right? Oh, you're going to yeah. have to. That's the hard part. <laughs> yeah. to hold on to your joy and your intention for the day when all the crazy stuff happens around you, when the negativ negativity happens around you. Like mm -hmm. that is the absolute struggle to create a life you love. And we've all seen those people who they just don't get phased by what somebody else says. Yeah. Like somebody yeah. else can be rude to them and they're like, nah, all right, that's them. And they just move on. And that's how you want to be able to be. Yes. And that's not, it's not pretending that your feelings aren't there. You can definitely take, give yourself a moment to feel the emotions, to acknowledge that's how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Don't try and press or be fake positive. I hate that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you got to move forward, like, right. And then you got to move on and you've got to give yourself the self love and the joy to get yourself back to that good place. Exactly. Those people who do that, who, um, you know, uh, don't let it affect them. They are masters. <laughs> they are oh. masters because it is hard to not be so reactive. It is difficult. You don't have to react to every single thing. That's the thing, you know? So yeah. not everything, to yeah. anything. Yeah. You do not have to react to anything mm -hmm. like you're it is up to you what you are going to respond to yeah. right and if you want to embrace the joy and the laughter and the fun like we're talking about now then when something like that comes into your life react to that in a positive way but when other stuff comes in negative talk from a family member right or whatever you just all right that's your opinion. Like what I've come to start saying to somebody when they were pretty negative in my life and saying this is going to be, and I'm like, okay, that's an interesting thought or, oh, okay, that's an interesting perspective. That's what I say. I don't even, I don't put them down. Mm -hmm. I don't engage with it. I don't even react to argue with it. I just acknowledge them so that they feel heard, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times someone going through negativity, that's, they just want to feel heard, right? Yeah. They're feeling something. And they're trying to share what they're feeling now because they're not able to process it themselves. Yes. Which is where we want to give everybody. We want to get everybody to where you're processing your own shit, right? So you don't <laughs> yeah. get out on other people. That's the goal, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So people being negative, those are people or, you know, really coming down or being rude to or whatever. Those are people who are not processing it themselves, right? They're not acknowledging how they're feeling. They're not processing it. So they're putting it off on you and yeah. saying, here, you process this. And so I see it, but I don't process it for them. All mm -hmm. I say is, oh, that's an interesting thought. Uh -huh. Or, oh, I hadn't thought of that perspective before. And then I'll go on maybe with, something positive from my perspective, but mm -hmm. I don't put them down. I don't start a fight. I don't get into their negativity, but I hear them and then just acknowledge it and move on. Oh, yeah. And so that way for me is one of my steps to then still stay in my positive space and my enjoy, you know, and my laughter. And then, you know, sometimes when you've been around someone really negative for a while, or they really pushed one of those buttons on you, which we're trying to get rid of all of our buttons, right? Yeah. If you don't have buttons, then people can't push them, right? That's the rule. Um, so I'm trying to get rid of all my buttons and doing that internal work, but I'm not perfect. So let's say someone pushes my buttons then, and I say my comment back, I'm just like, oh, non-judgment. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. And I don't judge them in any way, but then I might need five minutes. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I Take that break. You might, might need to walk around the block one time, get out in nature, listen to a song, like different songs. Music puts me in a good mood, right? Yeah. Watch a couple of memes on your phone if that's for you. Whatever it is, you know, that you need to do then to kind of reset, use our meditation minute, right? It's one minute and just watch the ocean. Just listen to the waves oh, and kind yeah. of reset. Yeah. Okay, I didn't engage. That was good, but now I need to reset from being neutral and non-judging to mm -hmm. now getting back to joy. 
and um, you just need a minute sometimes. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. So what is your breakthrough moment, Christine? Um, I think my breakthrough moment was knowing that I have the power. Yeah. I think people just give away their power. I think they they want to think they have self-love. They want to think they feel powerful, like they can accomplish anything. And so they're building kind of up their, their self-esteem. But that's not really understanding mm-hmm. that you have complete power over your entire day. Yeah. It's very, very different. Do you know what I mean? It's very, yeah. very different from believing you can do something to knowing you were put on this earth, born into this body with all the power that you need to have an extraordinary life. I love like that. Like in a yeah. life, you know, uh-huh. you were not God or source or however you want to refer to it, did not plop you into this body in this time, in this place and gave you, you know, dreams and goals and, you know, feelings mm-hmm. and all these emotions for you to struggle every day and be unhappy. Do you know what I mean? That's no, yeah. you yeah. have, but what it did get, you know, he did give you, um, is free will. Yes. Right. And, yeah. the, and, and so you get to decide if you're going to focus on the negative and the, I can't, and, the you know, at, let people affect you. So you're only reacting. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you're coming from that place, like we just said, of, oh, they made me unhappy today or this happened and it ruined my day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it does. Everything happens to ev- I mean, things, not everything. Let me say that again. Things happen to everybody. Everybody's got shit to deal with. That's life. If they've got loss. They've got divorce. They've got issues with kids. They've got, you know, as soon as you start talking to a stranger on the bus, like, and you start hearing their story, you're like, oh, wow. Or then you talk to someone yeah. else and you're like, oh, wow, you're going through that. Or you re- get to see a story, you know, in a magazine article or TV or whatever. And you're like, whoa, they're going through all that. Like, everybody's got their shit. Yeah. That's not going to change. The point is, how are you going to act in this world? What are you going to focus on? And how are you going to create your life? And if you're going to react, if you're only going to react without a plan, Mm -hmm. without really legitimate steps toward creating a great life, and you're just going to instead kind of wing it and go through and just react to everybody else's energy, you're in for a world of hurt. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I think that was my breakthrough moment. And that happened through cancer of really understanding and being empowered, mm-hmm. right? Really understanding that I am absolutely creating my future by every word coming out of my mouth, everything I say to other people, everything I'm saying in my head to myself. And my actions, like all of that, that is absolutely creating every day and I can choose them mm-hmm. or I can sit back and just react to everybody else. And yeah. I decided to become proactive and create my life and choose. Like I'm looking for this today. I'm looking for joy today, or I'm looking for laughter today. I am going to spot, I'm going to try and count and spot all the people laughing today. <laughs> I'm going to listen for laughter. I'm going to look for laughter, right? I'm going yeah. to put that out yeah. in the universe that I, w- I want to be laughing. I'm going to create moments, not just wait, but I'm going to actually create moments that will make me laugh. Like I am going out with a purpose today. This is my intention for the day and no one's going to get me off it, mm-hmm. right? And, and that that's what you have to do. And you have that power to make that happen. And then they build up, mm-hmm. right? One day into a week a week turns into a month and before you know it you're like wow yeah that was a great week (laughs) oh yeah yeah and you know it's it's always 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 important to really like read yourself too like I was saying when dealing with loss I was so sad and drained that I could feel it all throughout my whole entire body. And yeah. I had, you know, a very negative reaction. Like I had the worst migraine and it 
any time or any moment I started crying, it just was pulsating in my head and I could feel it all over my body. And, um, this was, um, particularly, um, during the time where my grandma passed away and it was a month before my wedding, you know, I was distraught and I, I was just so, you know, um, emotionally drained and I just was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to stop crying. I had my crying bit and I need to remember all the memories that I had with her when she was alive and happy and well and all that time I spent with her and just really reflect on that. I'm really sad that she's gone. Really, really sad that she's gone. However, like I, I know that she doesn't want me to be sick. She wouldn't want me to be sick. She wouldn't want me to be so down you know, cause she was in pain. She was in a lot of pain and, you know, yeah. it was her time. And just to really have that moment of, okay, well, you know, reflecting on memories, looking at pictures or just reflecting on her life story, you know, her life story is incredible. So that was, that really helped me out. And I found laughter and fun in that. Yeah. And as we said, I mean, I think it goes hand in hand, right? When there's loss, like you're going to have the sadness and mm-hmm. the pain of losing that person, as well as having the joyful and remembering all the joyful moments and having gratitude for being able to have them in your life. So I think they're interconnected. Yes. And as we've worked with our students and you and I for years, when everyone were an ever anyone would ask, Oh, how are you doing today? Like so many of my students, it's never one answer. It's never one thing. Your emotions are always usually kind of wrapped up together and you can have them mixed. You can have the joy and the celebration of their life as well as having the pain of the loss and it goes together. But what will get you through the loss is remembering and having that joy is having that laughter. Um, and, um, about who they were, but so I think it can get you through a lot of things. It's not just about loss. As I said, um, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that got me through my divorce when it was really, really hard is having my girlfriends around who took me out and, and made me laugh and took me to go do things. And so, you know, when you're going through transitions and change that are hard like that, you know, again, what gets you through it? joy and laughter like that is what will get you through these things and that's definitely as i said i found a way to use laughter specifically laughter um but also of course joy comes with it to get through my cancer treatment Mm -hmm. like i would not have been i would not have come out of it where i'm at now feeling empowered and creating my own life if i hadn't have had that laughter i just i know i wouldn't i and so for me that's what gets you through tough times. Yes. Oh, yeah. And find your inner child, guys. You, you were, we were all children at one point in our lives, right? And yeah, we were, we were all children. And we, we, you know, maybe you, you had a rough childhood, but there are moments in your life where you had joy and laughter. Really remember those moments. And if you need to refer to little ones, like I refer to the little ones all the time, my nephews and nieces, oh my gosh, they bring me so much joy. Uh, I get to do so much opportunities for them. So I'm so grateful that they're alive because they're in my life and they remind me to be a child and have fun with them and explore and see things through their perspective as well because they're learning, you know, and it's, that's the joys of being around kids. And hopefully I get to have kids myself to experience that joy with my future children. Yeah, I would say that's one of the biggest steps. So one for me, like one of the steps moving forward for this week, I think, is finding what really does make you laugh and bring you joy and scheduling that time. Mm -hmm. Like don't have an entire week of just responsibilities. Like you can balance it and you Mm -hmm. need to for your health. As we went through at the very beginning, that joy and specifically laughter has, you know, mental benefit, it has physical benefits and it has your social benefits. So the point being is that you've got to make sure you are bringing those things into your life or creating them into your life. So don't 
don't go through a week without setting that up for yourself, setting yourself up for success. Not everything happens easily as we get older, right? When you're a kid, you just experiences happen. You're around kids your own age when, at school or activities or whatever. Funny things happen. You're just more open and you're more joyful when you're younger. So as you get older, it doesn't mean that's not all still there. Mm -hmm. It just means you have to make sure you're focusing on it, right? Mm -hmm. You are only going to have in your life what you focus on what you make a priority and joy and laughter needs to be a priority in your life. So schedule fun. You can do it. Yeah. Schedule game night, right? That's one schedule going to a funny movie with someone schedule, you know, a book club where you're reading funny books or books that are making you laugh, right? Yeah. Schedule that. Um, you know, as we said, you can listen to podcasts, you can watch memes, you can do all these things like while you're, um, waiting in, um, you know, that's one thing I would do. I had to sit and wait for doctors, oh, um, yeah. a lot. And you know, that's not a short wait. We all know the line to wait for a doctor <laughs> sitting in, that room, in the waiting room. I mean, and so I could have been getting pissed off and mad that, oh my God, it's taking an hour. Or instead I was listening to a podcast that was cracking me up and mm -hmm. keeping me laughing and joyful. I'm like, wow, I get this opportunity to have an underinterrupted like 45 minutes to laugh. Uh -huh. It's like, I'm going to take it. Or I could have had the perspective, ah, oh, crap, I got to sit here and wait for 45 minutes. Yeah. Like, which one is going to make your life better? Laughter. Right? Which one? Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. So take the time to honestly schedule fun in your life and use those moments in your car, waiting in a waiting room, you know, wherever they are, those moments, we all have those moments in our day when you, you know, you can't do like when you're driving, it's limited what else you can do, right? When you're yeah. sitting in a waiting room, it's limited. We all have the, like when you're getting your tires changed or an oil change on your car, <laughs> yeah. we all have these moments throughout yeah. our week where you could just be like, oh, I have to sit here and wait and stressed out and working and, you know, worried about what you got to get to next and let your mind just spin, spin, spin with anxiety, you know, stressing you out. Yeah. Or you could start to look at them as, oh God, this is a moment I could laugh. Yeah. This yeah. is a moment that could be bringing me joy and laughter. I could be on the phone with a girlfriend right now cracking up uh -huh. or I could be watching a movie right now on my phone making me laugh or listening to a podcast. So you have the moments in your week. I promise you. I promise <laughs> you. You have them. You might think you don't. Even waiting in line to pick up your kids at the pickup line. Oh my God. We used to have to get in line, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> the kids at school, right? And you're sitting there for 30 minutes, you know? So everyone has moments when they have to wait. And instead of people getting stressed out and pissed off or whatever about having to wait, stop waiting and start creating your life. Start using these moments to bring yourself laughter and oh, joy. Yeah. Yes. That's, that would be my daily, you know, or tip for the week, I guess. How about you? Um, make time with people. Schedule that time with people. We're social, you know, social beings, human beings, sorry. <laughs> and um, we, you know, just to be able to interact with others. It's just so huge. Uh, I have so many great memories of, you know, my family and my friends going with me to the mountains. And, you know, I think I talked about it before in this podcast that, you know, I, we schedule a trip every year and we go fishing, you know, it's a calming activity and relaxing, but then we get to make fun of each other. We get to have, you know, a great experience, uh, with each other. And, um, we dance, we sing, we play games. We, we do a lot of cool different things and I will never take those moments for granted. Those moments are, I cherish every single time. And, you know, I always reflect afterwards, like, wow, that was a great trip. And you know what? Every single trip has been great. Even though there's moments of maybe people got, you know, they were arguing or whatnot. It happens. It's life. But there there was moments to reflect on how they got out of that argument or, you know, how they're now communicating with each other. And it's like, oh, that's great. It's great. So schedule that time. Schedule yeah, it. I think that's great. 
I think that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. What are you celebrating this week as far as bringing joy into your life? What are you celebrating? Remember, we ask you all to find something each week to kind of celebrate and focus on, right? To keep it going, to empower yourself, to keep yourself boosted, you know, celebrate those small moments. That's how they keep and build up into big moments. So we always try and get you to think of something you're celebrating. So what are you celebrating, Jeanette? Even though I was super, super sad about the whole COVID, you know, getting COVID and all that stuff, I am celebrating the time that I get to, you know, um, really reflect on myself and kind of, you know, figure out what I need and what I, you know, doesn't serve me anymore because I have alone time, you know, I'm isolated. I don't want to get my husband sick. So I have this time to really focus on myself. So I'm celebrating that. What about you? That's kind of like um, there, we talked about in previous podcasts, so hopefully you guys will listen to it, but about taking a full weekend, 40, yes. 48 hours, not just yeah. a couple hours alone once a year. Once a year is all we're saying. Take 48 hours and go someplace that means something to you um, or even stay home, like, but just without other people and look over your life as to what parts are bringing you joy and happiness and what's not. So it's a 48 hour or weekend um, revival um, yeah. type of thing, I guess, that we do, that we've been recommending to everyone to do just once a year. And um, so that's cool. That was kind of like your weekend revival. Yeah, I had to because I was so sad. My family was not too far away. And I was like, okay, don't be, let's, let's focus on something that brings you joy. And then I would take those moments to actually, you know, contact my family afterwards because I, I needed to pet myself up before I talked to them because then I would get sad again. But I was actually happy for them. So my perspective completely changed. So it was great. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's absolutely it. When you take that time and change your mindset, mm -hmm. you can change any situation, right? Any situation yeah. um, to be something of an advantage for you. So that's very cool. Um, for me, I think I've been celebrating um, being brave and it goes along with this joy and laughter of not taking yourself too seriously, right? I think I've started trying new things. I think I've started putting myself out there now that I've gotten, you know, I'm at kind of the end of um, this phase anyway of my cancer journey, right? Uh -huh. And I'm clear to start doing a lot of things now and go out and, and you know, be much more physical. And so I've been trying new things and a lot of times I'm doing them completely completely on my own mm -hmm. and I'm doing it completely as a novice for things that I want to do. And I'm not worried about how I look or what anyone's going to say, like she's too old or why is she doing that at her age or why is she there alone or whatever. And I've really let go of what anyone else is thinking. And it's been, God, it is so, they don't tell you <laughs> how freeing it is when you stop caring what anyone else thinks, like no one on this planet knows more than I do about my life. No uh -huh. one, uh -huh. no one on this planet knows more about my journey than me, my journey with God, my journey with my spirituality, my journey with the universe. Like no one knows it. Exactly. No one tell me anything about it uh, better than I can. Mm -hmm. Now, my goal is to learn from everybody else on their journey, like the people who know they're on a journey and are doing their own internal work. I love learning from those people. Yeah. But I've absolutely given up caring at all about the people who are not doing anything on their own. Like they're just out there projecting negativity yeah. or shaming or judging. I'm like, oh no, that that's, that's not who I want to be. So why would I listen to what they have to say? Yes. Right? Like that's the biggest thing. Don't mm -hmm. listen to what someone has to say. If that's a person not living a life you want or not being a person who you want to be, yeah. then don't listen to them because otherwise you're going to end up like them. And so it's been so freeing to me to only be focused on listening and taking advice from people that are on their own journey because they're very non-judgmental, right? Mm -hmm. They, because they know how hard a journey is. And so I'm really celebrating my bravery in trying all the new things I'm doing and doing it without taking myself seriously or caring what anyone else thinks. And it's, it's a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. I'm, I'm just tipping my toe in. I'm not there a hundred percent. I know people who are out there 
killing it, not caring what anybody thinks. Yeah. I'm not there yeah. yet, but I, I'm, I'm dipping my toe in. I, I can't wait to get all the way in this pool because it's fun. You can see it on you. You're glowing. You are yeah. glowing. <laughs> That's sweet. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> So hopefully out there, celebrate, right? Celebrate something this week, people. Write it down, record it. I think it's amazing to record yourself some, saying something great about yourself, right? Saying something positive about what you did and then save it. Um, I know a girlfriend who keeps her little videos, gives a, does a video for herself every single week about something she's proud of that she did or accomplished or whatever. And she has them and she says she doesn't even necessarily have to go back and replay them, but she keeps them in her Google, Google file and she just looks at them and she's like, oh my God, there's 30 in there. Like 30 <laughs> times I did something great. And then she's like, you know how empowering that is just to even see them in there. And I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. All right, everyone, that brings us to the end of our podcast. So don't forget to view those Monday meditation minutes. We mentioned them multiple times in this podcast, right? When you need that moment for yourself or, you know, just to be calm, collected and, you know, to get yourself together, really view those Monday meditation minutes. All right. Absolutely. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, also our newsletter. What do we have for our newsletter, Christine? Our newsletter is out. So remember, the only way that you can get our free content is if two ways. You have to sign up for our private Facebook group Uh and put in your email. Uh Or you can just email us directly at icreatedalifeilove at gmail.com. But you got to give us your email because we do not, you know, post it out. Um, That's for our monthly newsletter and our weekly blog. And remember, our weekly blog comes with a weekly challenge. So every week you get, um, you know, a challenge as to what you can focus on this week and a way... um, a part of your life that you can expand on and go kind of deeper into to bring yourself some joy and create um, a, that part of your life um, full of love. Mm-hmm. And so really cool um, that we give you step-by-step guidance and a full weekly challenge every single week. And then our monthly newsletter comes with a free digital page too Ooh. every single month. So you can use that too. Sounds great. Love it. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for listening to our podcast, and we hope you create a life you love. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.